Hey everyone, welcome back to Apps from Scratch. Today, we'll learn how to interact with the YouTube API, paginate data, and play videos. In our app, we display a user's profile image, name, sub count, and a list of their most recent videos. When we scroll down to the bottom of the list, we request the next batch of videos from the YouTube API and update our list of videos. We can play any video by tapping on a cell, which brings us to a new screen and plays the video. If you're new here, I'd appreciate it if you like and subscribe. Before we get started, I'm excited to let you know that I have just launched a new course on Udemy that focuses on building beautiful UI in Flutter step by step. If you enjoy my Apps from Scratch series on my YouTube channel, you'll love this course. Throughout this course, you'll build the UI of a food delivery app, budget app, and social media app, all while improving your skills along the way. I really put a lot of thought into this new course, and I'd love for you to check it out. I'll leave a link with the coupon code down in the description below. And with that, let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do is jump into our pubspec.yaml file and add the dependencies HTTP and YouTube Player Flutter. The HTTP plugin allows us to send requests to our API to get data, while the YouTube Player Flutter plugin allows us to play YouTube videos using the official YouTube iFrame Player API. The only setup we have to do is for the YouTube Player Flutter plugin on iOS devices where we add the key io.flutter.embedded underscore views underscore preview to our info plist file and set the value to yes. Android devices on the other hand do not require any setup. In order to interact with the YouTube Data API, we need an API key to authenticate our HTTP requests. Let's go to console.developers.google.com and here we're going to select the project button in the top left and click New Project. Let's name our project YouTube API, and then select Create. Once our project sets itself up, we go to Go to APIs Overview, and then select Enable APIs and Services. Here we can search for YouTube. and then select YouTube Data API v3. Click Enable, and then click Create Credentials. Here, let's select YouTube Data API v3. Select either iOS or Android, and then select Public Data. Now we can click What Credentials Do I Need? And here is our API key. We can select this to Copy, and then also click Restrict Key. Here we can scroll down and select Restrict Key, select APIs, and then check YouTube Data API, and hit Save. Back in our IDE, let's create a new folder called Utilities, and a new file called Keys.Dart. Inside Keys.Dart, we will create an API key constant, and set it equal to the API key we just copied. Before pushing our project to GitHub, it's very important to add our keys.dart file to our projects.getignore file because we don't want to expose our API key. We can do this by right-clicking the keys.dart file, selecting copy relative path, and then pasting it into our getignore. When we add our project to GitHub, our keys.dart file will not be included. Now we're going to make a new folder under the lib directory called models, and inside we will create channelmodel.dart. Our channel model will consist of eight different properties and has a factory channel.fromMap method that returns an instance of channel when we pass in our decoded JSON data that we received from the API. If we compare the parsing in our fromMap function to the JSON data, we can clearly see how we retrieve values from the data. For example, in order to get the profile picture URL, we go into snippet, then thumbnails, default, and then URL, which returns the URL as a string. For the Upload Playlist ID, we go into Content Details, then Related Playlists, and then Uploads, which returns our playlist ID as a string. Next, let's make video model.dart. Our video model will have four different properties, and just like our channel model, it also has a factory from map method. Here, we pass in our decoded JSON data, where we grab the values for our video ID, video title, thumbnail, and channel title. If we want to get the video ID, we go into the resource ID 
then video ID, which returns the ID of our video as a string. Back in channelmodel.dart, remember to import videomodel.dart so our videos list does not have an error. Next, we're going to create a services folder and an API service.dart file. At the top of our file, make sure you have all of these imports. Our API service will have two private variables, base URL and next page token. Base URL is the first part of the URL we request data from. Next page token stores the string value used to identify the next batch of videos when paginating our data. In order to keep track of our next page token throughout the lifetime of our app, we're going to turn our API service class into a singleton by defining a method called API service dot underscore instantiate, and then creating a static final instance variable equal to API service dot underscore instantiate. If you want to explore the YouTube API before we write our functions to retrieve data, you can go to developers.google.com slash YouTube slash v3 slash docs, which is very well documented. We're going to be fetching data from the channels and playlist items endpoints. The first function we're going to write is fetch channel, which takes a channel ID and returns a future channel as it's asynchronous. We create a URI, which consists of the base URL we defined above, and specifies the channel endpoint we want to hit. Our parameters specify the data we want to receive from the API like the snippet, content details, and statistics. It contains the ID of the channel we want to view and our API key to authenticate our GET request. The contents of our headers variable ensures that the GET request returns a JSON object. To get the response from our GET request, we await http.get and pass in our URI and headers. Then we check if our response has a status code of 200, which means that it successfully retrieved data. We decode the body of our response and store the first value of the items list in our JSON, which contains the channel information in a map. After we use our factory method to convert the map to a channel object, we fetch the first batch of the channel's uploaded videos with the next function we'll write called fetch videos from playlist. Assign the videos to the channel's videos property and return the channel. In the event our response fails and returns a status code that is not 200, we decode the response's body and throw the error message. The fetch videos from playlist function takes a playlist ID, which is the uploaded video's playlist ID. Just like our fetch channel function, we define parameters, a URI, and headers. For our parameters, we only request data in snippet for the playlist ID. We set the max number of videos returned in each request to 8 and set the page token to the current next page token in our app. In our URI, we hit the playlist items endpoint. Once we receive a response from our GET request, we check if the request is successful and then decode the body of a response into a JSON object. We store the next page token, and if data next page token does not exist or is null, then we set the next page token to an empty string. We store the list of JSON video objects located in data items in the variable videos JSON. Then we iterate over videos JSON and convert each JSON snippet to a video object, which we add to our videos list and return. And again, in the event our response fails and returns a status code that is not equal to 200, we decode the response's body and throw the error message. Now we're ready to create our home screen, which will display our data. Let's make our screens folder and file homescreen.dart. Inside homescreen.dart, we create our stateful widget home screen and have it return a scaffold. Back in main.dart, let's remove all of the boilerplate code, remove the debug banner, change the primary color of our app to colors.red, and set our home to home screen, which we have to import. In homescreen.dart, we will have two instance variables. The first is channel, and the second one is is loading, which we will use during pagination. Let's add an init state function and call the asynchronous function init channel. Init channel fetches a channel based on a channel ID and sets the state of our home screen's channel variable. You can find my channel ID by going to my channel and copying the string of characters after channel forward slash. Our build method will have a scaffold that contains an app bar with the title text YouTube channel. For the body of our scaffold, we will have a list view builder with an item count equal to 1 plus the number of videos in the channel's video list. We add one because we need an extra item for our channel information. So if the index is equal to zero, then we return our function buildProfileInfo. 
Otherwise, we grab the video from channel.videos index minus one and pass it into our build video function. Underneath init channel, let's write build profile info. It will return a container margin, padding, height, and a box shadow. The child of the container is a row widget that has a circle avatar that loads the channel's profile picture, a sized box with a width of 12.0, and an expanded column widget with two text widgets. Our channel title and subscriber count text widgets have the property overflow text overflow ellipsis to prevent very long text from going off the screen. The build video method takes in a video and returns a container with properties similar to our build profile info. The child of our container is a row widget that displays our video's thumbnail image and title text. When you hit save and hot restart the app, you may notice that there is an error that flashes about channel being null. This is because our build method runs briefly before our asynchronous init channel function sets the state of our channel variable. We can fix this by checking if channel is not equal to null in the beginning of our scaffold's body. If the channel is not null, then we render the list view builder. Otherwise, we display a centered red circular progress indicator. To add scrolling pagination to our app, we wrap our list view builder in a notification listener scroll notification. Inside the on notification function, we have an if statement that checks three things. The first is if we are not already loading more videos. The second is if the number of videos currently in our channel's videos list is not equal to the total number of videos the channel has. The third checks if we are at the bottom of our list view using the scroll details from on notification. Then we call the function load more videos and return false. Right above our build method, let's create the asynchronous function load more videos. We set is loading to true to ensure that we do not fetch more videos multiple times. Once we fetch the next batch of videos, we combine the current channel's video list with the new batch and update our channel's video state with set state to update our app's UI. Then we set is loading back to false so the user can load more videos when the bottom of the list is reached. Now we're going to add video screen.dart to our screens folder. This is a stateful widget called video screen that takes in a final string ID, which is the ID of the video we want to view. Remember to import material.dart and the YouTube player flutter package at the top of the file. In our video screen state class, we have a controller of type YouTube player controller that we instantiate inside our init state method. We'll set the video player to not be on mute and autoplay the video when it loads. Inside our build method, we have an app bar so we can navigate back to our home screen with the back button. The body of our scaffold contains the YouTube player widget that will display our video for us to watch. In homescreen.dart, we want to navigate to our video screen when we tap on a video container. Let's wrap our container in our build video method with a gesture detector and pass the video ID to our video screen by using navigator.push in the onTap function. If we tap a video, we are brought to our video screen and the video autoplays. And now we completed our YouTube API and video player app. As always, remember to leave a like, subscribe, share this video, and start the repository on GitHub. Don't forget to check out my new Flutter UI Udemy course if you want to improve your UI skills, and I'll see you in the next one.